Hello and welcome to the second game devlog video. And as you can hear, the new mic finally arrived, so the sound quality is not a nightmare anymore. With that said, I hope that you will get used to it very soon, but I am aware that some people will still miss the old one. I mean, the high-pitched noise in the background was a very distinctive feature for most of my videos so far, so I want, at least for now, at least for this devlog, to make this change a little bit smoother. So let me start again. Hello and welcome to the second game day vlog. I've got a new mic, but I kept the old noise. Okay, but seriously, there's a lot of things that I've done lately and as cool as the new mic sounds, I really can't wait to talk about them. So the first thing that I think is a major leap in development process for the game is the new chunk loading system. So far I was only able to load and render one chunk at a time, and to make things worse it was a very slow process. But thanks to some very important updates in my engine, I was now able, with a fair bit of work of course, to divide the terrain into chunks and work on them separately. The thing that enabled me to divide the terrain was a pretty drastic transition to a component-based architecture for the rendering part of the engine. It took me more than a month, but was totally worth it. I won't talk about it in this video though. But if you are interested in this topic, make sure to subscribe, as I will be talking about it in great detail in the next video. With that said, working with the old chunk loading system was a huge pain in the ass, and partly because of this, I'm very proud with the new chunk loading system. I think that seeing the terrain unfolding in real time is very cool, also, it is pretty interesting from the technical perspective. The train generation algorithms are running alongside the rendering process and even though they are very expensive in terms of compute power, the whole application runs very smoothly with occasional dips in FPS when there is a lot of data to be transferred to the GPU. This whole progress with the chunk loading system made me curious about how the terrain would look like if the terrain generation algorithm would be more sophisticated. So as always, I've got distracted and worked a few hours to implement something that would look a bit more interesting. And unsurprisingly, I soon find out that this will be much harder than I anticipated. Mostly because I didn't plan to implement the terrain generation algorithm so soon, the initial idea was to start with physics and simple gameplay. This meant that the code for the terrain generation had many temporary workarounds. And one of these workarounds was especially nasty, as it meant that on every edge of two chunks there would be an uneven seam. But having in mind that it was just a silly side quest, I decided that it should be alright for now. So the terrain looks like this now, it's based on my artistic take on Perlin noise, but I don't think that I will be using it for anything else than a demo. With that said, the next thing that I worked on was physics. I plan to implement physics for my engine for quite some time now, but I haven't started working on it earlier as I didn't have any application for it. This changed recently as I now want to start programming gameplay and to be more precise, I can't wait to finally be able to walk on the train. And even though this isn't something very hard to do in engines like Unity or Unreal, it is pretty hard for me to implement it. So, in my case, I had to find a suitable framework that will handle most of the heavy lifting for me, and there aren't many options out there. The best known and widely used framework is called Bullet. Unfortunately for me, it's written in C++, and to use it with Java, you have to find a suitable port. Now, here is the hard part. There are three main ports for Bullet framework, made for Java. Uh, LibGDX bullet is by far the most widely used one, uh, however it is a bit outdated and really it's made for something else than what I want to use it for. The next option is JBullet and I was working with it a few years ago. And then it was pretty interesting, but now there's really nothing happening with the project. In fact, it was abandoned quite some time ago and now it is just unwise to use it. So these two options are clearly not for me. Now, for quite some time I didn't know about the third one. 
In fact, when I started researching this topic a few weeks ago, I didn't know about it either. Fortunately, during my research, I checked a pretty popular game engine written in Java called JMonkey. I was interested to see what they were using for physics. And I stumbled upon an absolute gem, which is the Mini project. I'm still not sure how to pronounce it, by the way. But it had everything that I was looking for. It is based on Bullet and pretty similar to JBullet, which I'm used to. It is also well maintained and the author responds very quickly to any questions. So I decided to go with it, even though I had experienced quite a few problems with it when I was including the dependency for the project. But as for now, I managed to overcome most of them. I don't have any demo that would use it yet, but there is a pretty high chance that I will have one in the next game devlog. But for now, it's all that I had to say about the progress that I've made. I hope that you find it interesting. And I'm very excited for the next videos. The development process is faster than I expected. And if this trend continues, I'm sure that soon we'll be talking about integrations with Steam or even a first alpha release. And if you are still with me, this means that you really support my work. And if you could spend a minute or two to help me, there's an important thing that I have troubles with since quite some time now. Namely, it's very hard for me to have coverage for my videos. I'm sure that there are many people who are interested in this topic, especially now when the audio quality has improved so much. But generally speaking, YouTube doesn't care about videos in science and technology. So if you could spread the information about the channel in game dev related forums, for example, it would be truly awesome. If not, don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I mean, at least until the game is not playable. It was a goal of mine to create a 3D game using Java and Vulkan. So I'm not gonna quit it until one can download the game from Steam or some other platform. And of course, during this time, I will cover all of the progress that I will be making. With that said, I want to thank you for watching and wish you a truly awesome week. Please remember to always stay positive and enthusiastic. And I will see you soon.